What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10s. It feels like it's been a minute since I made a video because I've had a lot going on. I just moved into the new house. I'm in the new workshop and this workshop is not finished yet. I need to be putting all my tools away and organizing everything, but I got a phone call two days ago from Ryan Yen. He hit me up and said, hey Matt, what's going on? I want to do a project. And you know, I couldn't say no. So here I am. Today we're starting a new build series. This is episode one of a multi-series build. We are building the tiniest little John boat I've ever seen. I wasn't thrilled about it at first, but it's smaller. So it's going to hopefully be a quick build. We'll see how it goes. But the boat itself, a Tracker Topper 1032. Yes, you heard me right. This is a 10 foot John boat, 32 inches wide. It is a very small boat. Now he sent me some pictures of the boat and he literally dropped the boat off two days later. I was like, dude, like this is going to happen and it's happening now. So this is what we're getting into guys. I'm going to show you this boat in just a second. If you're not familiar with Ryan Yen, you need to go do your homework. Go catch up on the last boat that I built for him. That was the Yen 10. It was a 1436. And at the time I told him, I was like, dude, this is not the boat you want to build. This is small. Boat had a story, yada, yada. It's a now, lot of simple fact that this boat has a story. I'm going to build this thing out. I'm going to make it sick. It's not going to be over the top. It's not going to be King Neptune. I'm sorry, Ryan. I cannot turn this boat into King Neptune. It's just not possible. But I'm going to give you a sweet build. Anyways, it's going to be a trick 10. Don't worry, it's gonna be nice. You're gonna like it. Everybody's gonna think it's cool. It's outside of my box though. It's different. It's not something that I'm used to building. These smaller boats like this usually are not stuff that I would really want to get into. I like to have at least a 48 wide. I don't like riveted boat, but this one's riveted. We're gonna make do. I'm gonna show you guys the boat because the boat obviously needs some work. A lot more than just tricking, it needs to be fixed first. Let's turn this camera around and show you exactly what we got going on. All right, so this is the boat that we are dealing with. This thing is tiny. It looks like a canoe. I've never had this much room in my garage to walk around a boat, let alone work on it. And here we are two months later. This is what the famous Yen 10 looked like. Hopefully we have the same luck with this project. I built the boat for him against my better judgment and the thing turned out sick. So we're hoping the same thing happens with this project right here. I'm gonna leave some links in the description of this video. Go check him out on YouTube. Big ups to you, Ryan. He just hit 200K followers. Last time we built a boat a year ago, he was a little under 100. So dude is growing quick. He's actually a really nice guy and he can make some good content. So go check him out, guys. I'm gonna turn this camera around. I'm gonna show you guys what we're working with, what I plan to do with it. I don't know. We'll figure this thing out as we go. Let's get right into it. All right, so here we go. This is the boat, guys. Check this thing out. Look how tiny this thing is. Look at those itty bitty little wheels on there. My God, he's missing a lug nut. Dude is missing a lug nut and just drove this thing two hours to get here. He did tell me that the trailer needs new hubs on it, but he ran the risk of bringing it here for the sake of making good content for you guys, and he made it. So we're probably going to end up having to put some new hubs in there and hopefully upgrading those wheels because those things are tiny man they're suspect this whole boat will probably bounce in the back of the trailer when you're driving this thing down the interstate but man i don't even know where to start i guess we'll start up here or maybe we should start way up here because the trailer that's on this boat is humongous i mean he's probably got eight foot of the whole trailer sticking out here so we're definitely gonna have to shorten that down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off because this is old school. This is a inch and seven eighths and nobody uses a damn inch and seven eighths hitch anymore. So we're gonna cut this trailer back probably somewhere in here and move his jack back here. I'm gonna put a two inch ball on here because it makes a whole lot more sense to have a two inch receiver. Uh, he definitely needs a new winch on this thing. Got a lot of rust on there and uh, that's, that's pretty suspect. But you can see it's somebody came back and put a bolt through here, which is good because the last time we built the Yen 10, this whole front was about to pull off of here. That handle is not really made to hold a winch. This boat right here is pretty much meant for, you know, backyard ponds. You throw it in the back of your truck, you and your grandpa pick it up, put it in the water. I said that about his last boat and that thing has gotten a lot of attention and Caught him a lot of big fish, and so we'll this see. This one just has a riveted handle on here. Now this is the type of boat that you would literally pick up with your grandpa and put in the back of his truck and go fish his private pond exactly how it sits. But this is not the boat that you want to build out, in my opinion. 
but we're gonna do it. It's gonna be outside my box. It's a challenge and I like a challenge. I'm always up for a challenge. Up here on the bow. Now somebody did build this casting deck in a minute and this thing's kind of comical. I'm gonna show you that in just a second, but he's got some spotlights on here. Now, I don't know if Ryan will use these or not. I mean, I guess you could use them to spot some fish and he can get up here and do some bluegill gigging. He's into bluegill, so maybe they'll work for him. I don't know, but we're probably just gonna get rid of these. This is kind of silly and it's probably not gonna fit into the boat build. But obviously the front of this thing right here, this is thin. I mean, the whole boat's thin, but we are going to end up putting a trolling motor on here. I've got a trolling motor over there in the corner. You see that one? That one's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you that in just a second, but we might actually incorporate that into this build right here. Somebody's got some wood in here and they built this thing with a steel hinge, steel screws, all no-nos, wooden carpet, not up my alley, but they did get a little casting platform deck up in here. But look at this thing. Look at their subfloor framing. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's nice. It's steel. Are you kidding me? They put steel angle in here. Wow. On top of that, it's just bolted together. This thing's got nuts on the back of it. So, uh, yeah, whoever did this, kudos to you. I guarantee you whoever did this was an electrician because there's lots of conduit ran in here. It's got some LED lights in here. Look, it's got a little lawnmower battery. Okay. I'm going to use this to power his live scope. <laughs> That's the live scope battery right there, guys. But we're definitely gonna be taking all this crap out of here. The steel is a no-no, guys. It's gotta go, it's heavy, and it's rusting, and it's just flat out ugly. So we're gonna get rid of that, and we're gonna frame this thing out. I mean, it's a tiny little boat, so there's not a whole lot of space in here, but let's finish walking this thing over, and then we'll talk about some layout designs. It's got a little seat boost base in here. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna do away with that too, because Ryan doesn't sit down. He's young, and he's got good legs, so he can stand up, and fish all day long. Now look, this is why I think this guy's an electrician. Everything is enclosed in this little box. He does have some, you know, switches in here. He's got a cigarette charger and USBs. So I'm pretty positive he was an electrician. We might incorporate this into the build. I don't know. It looks really old school. It's like something off a tugboat, but it works. We've got some horse stall mats in here. And these things have a lot of grass in here. Not gonna lie to you, there was a bunch of flies in this thing when he brought it to me. And it's kind of dirty. The hole itself looks like it's in pretty decent shape though. Uh, I didn't notice it when Ryan was here, but there's a couple of holes in the side of the boot where some things are mounted. Like, you see this? It's riveted. So is that. Well, where did those rivets go? Right out the side of the boot and they're not closed rivets so we're gonna have to do away with those get rid of that stuff i'm gonna weld those up it's ugly and these are definitely gonna be pushing the water line probably below the water line because if i know fisher again he is gonna pack at least five guys in here and he's gonna go monster bluegill hunting out of this thing so we got to make sure that this thing can hold as much weight as possible because it's only rated for Two persons or 280 pounds 320 pounds with persons motor and gear three horsepower motor well I'm not exactly sure what motor he's going to use i do have a 3.5 horsepower nissan motor i'll show you guys that in just a second but we might end up incorporating that into this build on the transom now the transom it's wood it's thin it's ugly and it's got some pieces back here that are like jack plates, I guess, to hold the motor up. I don't know what this guy was running on here, but it's got to go. I mean, this is just really ugly. Fisher Yen does not want to be seen fishing out of anything. It's got a bunch of old wood on the back of it, and I don't want to put him out there or anything like this. So I'm going to take all this wood off of here. I'm going to reinforce this transom. I'm probably just going to do away with all the wood on the inside too and build him some type of a frame in here, maybe out of like a... Uh, inch and a half by three inch uh, rectangular tubing and it probably gonna have to be kind of heavy because we're going to put some type of motor on here so we'll probably use like at least a 3 16 maybe even a quarter i don't know i'd rather go above and beyond and make sure these things can be strong for them all right so let's get into the layout so i'm thinking that 
It's only a 10 foot boat. You can only do so much with this thing, but we want to have a nice deck back here in case he has a partner back here fishing with him. So like a lot of the bills, we're probably going to put, you know, a small blank off plate on either side, have some type of hatch in the center here. He's either going to have a gas tank or if he runs an electric outboard, then he's probably going to have a big battery in here to power that. Now, the motor that I have has the gas tank built into the top, it's only 3.5, and that could potentially leave this area opened up, you know, for storage and stuff. But this bench right here, we're going to leave this bench and we're going to build off it back. This bench, though, we're going to cut out big hole in here, drop a hatch inside of this. That's going to give him lots of storage in there. It's probably going to be where a majority of all his tackle and you know stuff like that is going to be at and if he has a backseat motor then maybe he can give them a little bit of room inside of one of these compartments to put their gear the floor in this thing is the bottom of the boat obviously i don't really like that just being exposed i mean this hole is thin it's probably like a 070 or something and it's got lots of rivets in here though guys but the good thing about this is it's only 32 inches wide so there can't be with so many rivets in it i'm gonna buck all these rivets to the best of my abilities get them as tight as i possibly can hopefully this thing will last them for a long time got some more conduit more rivets going through the side of the hole over here I'm probably going to build him some type of a small side panel in here. I don't know, because the deck differences are pretty dramatic in this boat. Uh, we'll see what it looks like when I get all this wood tore out of here. But I'm definitely going to put him some type of floor in here. I might make this floor removable just because it's such a small boat. And it might come in handy in case he runs into something and rips a hole in here. I can repair it for him. Or if one of these rivets in here gets loose, we can get in here and fix them. But that's kind of where I'm going with it. Floor hatch hatch front deck not sure on now there is a bench underneath of this right here this is pretty much garbage anyways so there's a the bench do the same thing with that bench that we're gonna do with this rear bench we're gonna put a big hatch in here and that's just gonna give him some more storage in this front area up here he doesn't really have you know a whole lot of room wow uh, that's 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 pretty bad look well, I guess we just saved ourselves a lot of time and we just demoed the entire old deck that was in here in about five seconds. Yeah, just go ahead. See you later, buddy. All right. Now we can really see somebody's handiwork in here. Now, if they would have used aluminum, I really wouldn't have been hating on them too bad because it's not bad, but come on now, you're going to put steel in a boat? And it's only 10 foot, really 10 foot. And you decided to use steel in it. Yeah, it's heavy and it's obviously rusting. I mean, damn, you couldn't even paint it. Okay, it is what it is. All right, so I don't know what's up with this. This thing is sitting on the bottom of the boat. It doesn't look like it has any issues down there. It's just some surface rust that's coming off of the angle in the bottom of it. So I think we clean this up, paint it. We'll double check it, look this thing over real good. Make sure it doesn't have any leaks or anything and that's the main thing then we're going to figure out our layout now if we use a recessed foot pedal tray i could probably pull that up here into part of this now if i do that i'm going to have to bring it back obviously like here so we have the option of doing the same type of deal with a port and starboard hatch but i'm thinking if we do a recessed foot pedal tray maybe we just do one more big hatch here and that will leave us with a total of one two three four including the transom hatch it's only four hatches so it's a 10 foot boat i mean there's not really much more you can do with it besides that but if we do this foot pedal tray up here then we got to figure out how we're going to mount a trolling motor now he doesn't have a trolling motor for this build he does have some turf and some other sponsors and stuff for batteries and stuff but i don't know all the details on that yet but as far as a trolling motor i have a trolling motor that's actually perfect for this boat now check this stuff out so this trolling motor right here this is a 40 pound thrust motor guide and look at that it has a transom mount on it it's only a 36 inch shaft and it has a foot pedal now i know you've probably never seen one of these because i'd never seen one that's why i got it and i was going to build me a little boat for the ponds around here i was going to use it for that but uh i might actually incorporate this into his build and then over here two more small outboards that's what i was talking about got a nissan 3.5 another one right here this blue one looks pretty cool though. I'm gonna see if we can incorporate this into his boat build because I like the look of it. And the cool thing about it is that it's got a gas tank right here. You just put the gas directly into the outboard 
And we do that, then we don't have to worry about having a tank back in this compartment back here. And that's just gonna take up more space. We don't have to worry about having hoses coming up to that. Or if he does an electric outboard, he might end up having to run a big battery in here. And that's just gonna be more weight in the boat to begin with. So hopefully he's game for running that motor on here. I haven't started those things in a while and we gotta see how they're gonna do, but I think I can get that thing running. And I think it will work perfectly for this build. The trailer itself is kind of crappy, man. I mean, it's not like rusting, but he definitely needs probably some new springs, really needs to get some bigger tires, and he definitely needs some new hubs because he took this thing to a local mechanic and they told him that both the outer and inner seals were seized up. They threw some grease in there and he sent it and he made it. So now we got to figure out what we're going to do with it. It does have some very long bunk boards on here. I mean, this thing sticks out like a good foot past the transom. Not terrible the way they're sloped. It might help him because he might end up taking this thing and it's light enough that he could probably back it up to a spot where there's not a ramp and he could slide it off and get it in the water and slide it back onto the trailer. Those extra long bunk boards might actually help him getting this thing up here because you can see they're sloped down. So probably just leave that the way it is. Now I know he's gonna have some electronics going in here. So we're gonna have to put a transducer on the back of this thing. We gotta get rid of this. They got some more wood down here. Probably weld a piece of aluminum up there, but we've got our work cut out for us. Now the guy painted this thing. The paint job doesn't look terrible. It's just dirty. It's got dirt on it, but honestly, it's like a battleship gray. I don't hate the color. I mean, the color could work with everything we're doing. I'm just not sure if it's gonna be something I can match up. So more than likely, we're gonna have to paint this boat because I gotta do some welding on the hull. I gotta repair all those stupid rivet holes that are in here. That's gonna take some time. The whole boat is looking pretty cool. It's only a 10 foot boat, but to make this thing into a mini Yen 10, it's gonna take a little bit of time, guys. And this thing is definitely needs some love and attention the way it sits. So we'll see what happens with it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this steel and stuff out of here. And then I'm gonna really get some measurements and figure out how I'm gonna start building this thing. All right, so I never in a million years imagined that I would be building another boat with Fisher Yen a year after I just built him a boat. On top of that, I would never have imagined it only be 10 foot, guys. I mean, come on. I am the tin can killer. This is trick tens. We don't work on riveted holes, especially not tiny little John boats like this. But you know what? If it's for content and he wants to do it, I'm going to help him out. He's a good dude and good friend of mine. And we're going to turn this little 10 footer into the baddest 10 foot fishing machine you guys have ever seen. I hope you all are ready. Stick around for this because you do not want to miss this build series. As always, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. This is going to be a cool boat build. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like, subscribe button, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this tiny little 10 over here. He's going to be running a video on his channel very shortly, and he wants some input on this build, like the colorway, the turf, the lights, all of the stuff that's going to go into it. He's going to let you guys be involved in that. So go check him out on YouTube at Fisher Yen. Definitely going to be a cool video. I'll see you guys next time. Gotta get back to work. Thank <laughs> you.